What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management Channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and Finra Saga. And on today's video guys, I will show you several quite interesting and important news. First of all, I will do a follow-up uh, to my yesterday's video in regards to Mark Basile's statement uh, that he potentially might make some pressure on the next bridge hydrocarbons in order to uh, uh, push the case uh, to the resolution. Then I will continue with the major news uh, for today's video and it is definitely uh, the new filings that was made by next bridge hydrocarbon. It is S1 filing. And on top of that, uh, I will show you what does this mean in terms uh, of uh, the value, intrinsic value of uh, uh, next bridge hydrocarbons and how it might affect uh, our case in general. So guys, and before we dive deep into all of this, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and drop me a line in the comment section for whatever reasons you want. And let's start with this news. Mark Basil uh, also to this uh, tweet that was published by uh, Finn AI. And uh, FinAI wrote this, after hearing this publicly shared strategy against NextBridge, I am wondering, was this the plan all along? As a shareholder, I am concerned about how this approach serves us, especially when our questions uh, go answered. And he added uh, this, uh, uh, this audio, and uh, let me first of all uh, show you this in details. That was a contract between NextBridge and all the MMTLP holders. So even if right. the brokers, even if the brokers oversold, NextBridge still has an obligation to deliver those shares. How come nobody's talking about that? Hmm. Think about it. It's not MMTLP is separate. MMTLP by contract, publicly publicly disclosed, uh, approved by the board of directors of both companies. And no comments by the SEC allowing it to go effective, meaning it's a contract. Where are the shares? Right? Where are the shares? What, AST can't deliver them? That's bullshit. They have the instructions by the issuer. The brokers can't deliver it? So what? What is NextBridge doing about that? What have they done about that? since december 14th have they done anything about it december 14th 2022 that's a long time ago you got to ask yourselves all these questions from a practical aspect they have a contractual duty to deliver those shares to the mmtlp holders so guys as you can see the main question uh, of uh, this uh, audio is following where is the shares and uh, uh, the second question is, why didn't uh, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons do anything uh, in regards to resolve, resolve this problem? And uh, I have to say that, take a look uh, right here, Paul T uh, wrote this tweet in response uh, to the tweet, uh, to the original tweet, and uh, he wrote, I don't agree with this assessment. Fraudulent counterfeit MTLP shares were sold into the market, not by MIT or Next Bridge Hydrocarbons. As such, it's uh, the broker dealer's responsibility to provide either the authentic shares uh, or its uh, monetary value to the shareholders. And BH had already provided the full official outstanding shares, uh, 165.5 million, million, to the DTCC for disbursement uh, to all broker dealers. The broker dealers are responsible for allowing the practice uh, of producing counterfeit shares without uh, bothering to locate authentic shares. I stand uh, by my interpretation. If I'm wrong, please correct me. And uh, Mark wrote this, uh, Paul, morally and uh, in the chain of uh, possible unlawful events, you're not wrong, but look up uh, the legal definition of fiduciary duty of corporate officers. And guys, definitely the fiduciary duty of corporate officers uh, force them to uh, do their best in order to solve any problems uh, that uh, might uh, happen with the shareholders. And uh, definitely, this uh, is not the point of uh, this uh, entire actions. And uh, they had to do anything, uh, uh, I mean, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons had to do anything uh, uh, in order to solve uh, it uh, back uh, in uh, 2023, at least in 2023. So guys, 
And uh, let's uh, switch uh, for now to the main use of today's video. Junk Savvy wrote this. Next bridge hydrocarbons uh, files amended as one. Registration statement. 40 million shares to select accredited investors. Roth Capital uh, as a placement agent. And guys, uh, take a look uh, right here. This is uh, this document uh, uh, itself. You can find it uh, by this uh, link that was provided by uh, Junk Savvy. And let me quote to the offering. The following is a brief summary of some of the terms of this offering and is qualified in its entirety by reference to the more detailed information appearing elsewhere in this prospectus. So, number of shares outstanding before the offering 251,930,516 shares of common stock. And we knew this official number. Next one number of shares outstanding after uh, the offering if all the shares are sold. 291,930,516 shares of common stock. So, they technically can add about 40, up to 40 million shares. Next one, purchase price. The purchase price of each share of common stock is, and we don't have this price. And this is the crucial point of, uh, to, of this document. And uh, let me quote you uh, the following. Proceeds uh, to us. Uh, so, uh, the amount that is uh, that we don't know what it should be, based uh, on the maximum of 40 million shares being sold, there is no assurance that uh, we will be successful in selling this entire amount. Furthermore, there is uh, no minimum amount of shares uh, that may be sold under this offering, and we have no intention to return funds raised to investors uh, should we sell lesser amounts uh, than the maximum, even if the amounts raised are not sufficient to fully undertake our plan as identified in this prospectus. Use of proceeds. We expect to use the proceeds from the offering to fund our drilling and exploration activities in order to meet uh, our drilling obligations, as well as for general corporate purposes, which include funding, working capital, and operating expenses. See our uh, use of proceeds. So, guys, and this is a very good uh, statement. This is a very good uh, fact that they want to continue to explore and uh, to drill uh, their properties in order to find more gas, oil and gas assets and in order to improve intrinsic value of, uh, uh, of the company. But at the same time, guys, 40 million shares and the issuance of these 40 million shares is definitely a delusional process, despite the fact that uh, all these shares uh, cannot be tradable. And guys, take a look again on Mark Basile's uh, uh, statements. Uh, so, Trading Secrets, Ali from Trading Secrets wrote this. Next Bridge Hydrocarbons issue their amended S1. The company have stated that we are offering directly to selected accredited investors up to 40 million shares of common stock. And uh, uh, Mark wrote this. So, uh, in response again to uh, the Ali's uh, uh, original tweet uh, and in response to the tweet that was uh, published by uh, Bruce Burton. I hope I hope some of those accredited investors are brokers desperately looking to close out their short positions. And Mark wrote, and what if they do it in price uh, in the offering? And guys, uh, you know that we don't know what is the price and what should be the price of uh, these shares. Their only obligation then is to deliver the stock after they get it. They get the stock to cover at pennies instead uh, of the prices on December the 9th. Then deliver the stock. Then you get uh, what the spin out shares from 2022 one to one exchange, one for one exchange. Now you have uh, next bridge shares. Then what? So now no resolution in cash dealing with the attempted squeeze. What's the price per share in the amended S1? Think it through. And uh, yes, guys, we don't know what is the price of the shares and what might be the price. And this price. Uh, uh, should uh, be defined uh, by the equilibrium of uh, supply and demand. And if uh, a lot of uh, broker dealers will be allowed to buy these shares and if uh, uh, they uh, will be forced to cover their short positions and for now we don't know how big this short position is and how much shares do they need. In this case, uh, the short squeeze might happen with these 40 million additional shares. Because think of it like this. If uh, there is uh, much more short positions uh, that we know was uh, uh, opened uh, back in 2022, 
and uh, they have to cover all of these short positions if uh, all the broker dealers uh, will be forced to cover their short positions in this case uh, they will uh, pay uh, an extra amount of money in order to cover their position and in order to cover themselves in this case definitely the price might be much higher but if the number of short positions is uh, lower than 40 million shares this means uh, we will not have a sufficient amount uh, uh, even to uh, collect, uh, to uh, operate uh, uh, for several years. I mean, next bush will not uh, collect this uh, money. And this is uh, definitely the most concerning part uh, of uh, this uh, prospectus. On top of that, guys, uh, take a look on uh, Phoenix tabloid uh, tweet that he published in response to the tweet that was uh, written by Rick Oslot. And Rick wrote, uh, so in the document filed with the SEC that uh, is subject to strict liability for any omissions or misstatements, Nextbridge Hydrocarbons claims the share count is uh, 251 million and has no mention of naked shorts, overages or counterfeit shares in the S1. Interesting. And uh, Phoenix Tabloid wrote uh, in response to this. So, next British Hydrocarbons has no mentions of counterfeit shares in their S1 because to say that without any proof would subject them to fines. What is the share count? And guys, uh, definitely for now we don't have uh, any rulings from judge or any uh, material uh, proofs of uh, the uh, short positions uh, except uh, the number of uh, 2.65 million shares that was uh, disclosed by FINRA itself. But uh, we know that Greg McCabe uh, stated in one of uh, the documents that was filed again uh, uh, with SEC that uh, there is much more than 2.65 shares shorted on uh, NBH and uh, all of these shares are hidden abroad. And uh, this uh, is definitely uh, the part of our investigation. And uh, unfortunately for now, we don't know the exact number of this short position because uh, no one disclosed uh, the information about the blue sheet data. And guys, take a look right here. Richard Hoffman in uh, his Twitter account uh, wrote this tweet. Wait a second, I will find it uh, within just a couple of minutes. So. Uh, he wrote this nine hours ago. MGLP, most common excuse given by regulators. My dog ate the blue sheets. And uh, definitely we have a lot of excuses uh, from authorities. Uh, as you can see, we have even uh, more responses, more pictures in regards to this uh, statement. And yes, uh, the, uh, blue sheet, uh, the blue sheets information will give us uh, huge... Uh, huge uh, breakthrough in our case because in this case we will know uh, the exact amount of shares that was shorted back in the days and the short position that was transferred to the private company on top of that guys take a look uh, right here uh, the securities and exchange commission wrote this tweet uh, just several hours ago uh, they said fraudsters use persuasion techniques uh, to try and scam investors watch out for everyone is buying it bitches pressure to buy or invest now, and small favors that make you feel obligated. Learn more about what you can do to avoid fraud. And guys, I think this uh, tweet is quite ridiculous uh, in light of our case. And Junk Savvy, let me show you, Junk Savvy wrote uh, this in response uh, to the tweet that was written by SEC. She wrote, Fraud fraudsters also, pick and choose uh, which rules to enforce and on whom. Uh, she refers to FTDs, break their own rules in violation of their uh, mission and powers granted to them by Congress. She refers to Rule 6490. Next one, allow captured members to serve on regulatory committees where they act in their own self-interest rather than uh, that of uh, the retail investors. And she refers to the U3 halt panel and the U3 halt itself. Facilitate uh, the a criminal enterprise in destroying our capital markets and financial independence. Where is uh, the warning label for that, Gary? FINRA fraud is a criminal orga FINRA is a criminal organization. Change my mind. And uh, definitely, we have a lot of uh, evidence uh, of uh, the illegal actions that were performed by FINRA and SEC, and we have a lot of facts uh, that uh, a lot of uh, authorities uh, want to cover. FINRA and themselves in order not to be accountable for this issue. 
And uh, I think uh, we have uh, to uh, solve it uh, on a grand scheme of things. We have to solve it not only for MMTLP community, but for the entire stock market. And that is why, guys, we are here. And uh, in my opinion, it doesn't matter who is the wrongdoer. We have uh, to uh, solve for the MMTLP problem. And the solution should be the coverage uh, of all the damages. And in my opinion, with this solution, all the damages of MMTLP shareholders should be covered by the wrongdoers. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MMTLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stay